Welcome to Lesson 4a, Combustion Part 2. Today we're going to consider non-stoichiometric combustion and something called equivalence ratio. I'll do an example problem also. So let's look at first the chemical equation that we had for methane. You can do this for any other fuel. This A molar coefficient is the actual molar coefficient in a combustion equation. It may not necessarily be stoichiometric, but we're still going to call it A. And then we have these products of combustion for the ideal case. This is all we have. And we're going to define A stoic as the stoichiometric molar coefficient. So whenever a is equal to A stoic, that's a stoichiometric combustion, ideal or balanced combustion. Remember, what that means is that all the carbon in the fuel gets converted to carbon dioxide. So the only carbons here are in the fuel and the carbon dioxide on the right, and there's nothing else here with carbon. So all of it gets converted. That's called stoichiometric or ideal. However, if A is not stoichiometric, we can have either fuel rich or fuel lean, as we'll talk about. And so let's define the molar fuel to air ratio. This is defined as the number of moles of fuel over number of moles of air. That actually turns out to be 1 over A since we always have this coefficient as 1. We don't call that some variable. We just set that equal 1. So we're always assuming 1 mole of the fuel interacts with A moles of the, in this case, simple dry air. So the molar fuel to air ratio is one over A. And I put a little subscript N and that just means molar because you can also do fuel to air ratio by mass if you wanted. We're doing it by moles. So it's a molar fuel to air ratio. The stoichiometric value is one over A when A is A stoic. Now we'll define equivalence ratio. And this is simply the ratio of FAN over FA and stoic, and using these values up here, we have 1 over A over 1 over A stoic, which turns out to be A stoic over A. So this is the equivalence ratio, and it has significance for combustion. So first of all, when phi equal 1, we have stoichiometric combustion, and that means that A is equal to A stoic, and then the fuel to air ratio molar, with the subscript N, is F over A N stoic which you can see from this equation up here, the definition. And this means that this is ideal combustion, stoichiometric or ideal. So there's no additional combustion products, nothing additional besides the ones that I already have up here, namely a CO2, water vapor, and the nitrogen goes along for the ride. Okay, what if phi is less than one? This is called fuel lean. And what that means is A is greater than A stoic. So we have excess air because the A is bigger than it should be for stoichiometric. So we're putting in more air. And so this is called fuel lean or air rich, air excess air. And then F over A N is less than F over A N stoic. And so it's not ideal and we get some extra combustion products such as CO, maybe some NOx, NO something, some soot, alcohols, aldehydes, etc. Now let's do the same thing with phi greater than one. When phi is greater than one, this is the opposite case. It's fuel rich. You have too much fuel or too little air. In other words, incomplete combustion. And so it's just the opposite of what we had up here. We had this N less than the N stoic. And here FA over N is greater than FA over N stoic. And it again is not ideal, just like the five less than one case. And we get similar products. In addition, we can get some unburned fuel because you're putting in too much fuel, other hydrocarbons, lots of soot. So this would be like, for example, when you have the choke on when you first start your lawnmower and you get all this black smoke coming out. There's a lot of soot and other nasty stuff that can come out when this combustion is fuel rich. So let's do an example problem and I'll use methane here as our example again. Here methane is burned with simple dry air just like before and this is what we had. Our previous equation was the same as this and we calculated those stoichiometric molar coefficients and we came up with this equation for stoichiometric combustion. That means that this A stoic is 2 because our A is 2 for stoichiometric combustion. So A stoic equal 2. 
And again, all the carbon in the fuel is converted to CO2 and there's nothing else. So let's consider a non-stoichiometric case. And there's a lot of ways you can construct this. Lots of nasty combustion products and you get these extra products of combustion like carbon monoxide, et cetera. And you can have some NOx and some other stuff. But let's suppose here we, we're doing a simple case. So we take the same equation that we had up here, except we add two more terms, three actually, E, the molar coefficient E times carbon monoxide. This is going to be an excess oxygen case. And so some of the oxygen will just pass through and not interact with anything. And then some other trace stuff that we're not going to worry about. So let's consider a fuel lean. In other words, there's too much oxygen. So A is greater than A stoic. A stoic was two. So let's just pick out of the hat A equal 2.35 and then determine the remaining molar coefficients. So you know how to do this in any chemical equation by balancing each element. So let me just write the equations. First, we take the carbon. On the left, we have one carbon. And on the right, we have B times, there's one C there. And then there's another one. There's an E for the carbon monoxide. And we do this for the other elements. So let me write these out. You can write these in any order. I like to do the simplest ones first so I can solve for some of these right away. What I mean by simple is C only occurs in three terms. H only occurs in two terms, actually. That's even simpler. So we can get E equal one minus B, C equal two. For the N, we get, we actually solve for D. And then the hardest one, because it appears in the most terms, is the oxygen. There's a 2A, there's a 2B, there's a C, and there's an E, and there's two Fs. So we make our equations. Now, what you can realize here, if you think about it, there are three unknowns left that we haven't solved for yet. That's namely B, E, and F, but we've already used up these two equations. So the only two equations we have are these two. And so there's three unknowns and two equations. So mathematically, we say this is not well posed and therefore we can't solve it. So what are we going to do? Well, it turns out that we don't have enough information. And so you're going to have to know something, either E or F or B. One of these is going to have to be known. So what we can do is solve simultaneously. Let's suppose that we'll specify, or typically what we do is measure, F. So we'll look at how much of the oxygen, F is this term with the oxygen, how much of that oxygen is actually passing through and not interacting, not burning anything else. It's not oxidizing anything, just passes through. So if we specify F, we can solve for everything else. So let's just take these equations that are left E equal 1 minus B, and we can solve this one here. 2A equals that. So I'll just call this 1 and 2 instead of writing them out. So let's solve 1 and 2 simultaneously for E and B for a given F. And that's just a bunch of algebra that you should know how to do, substitute things in and, and work that out. And so what I get in terms of F then, B is 1.7 minus 2F in this case, and E is 1 minus B. So I can calculate B and then I can calculate E. This is for a given F, right? But we don't know what F is. So let's just try some cases. So let's try F equals zero and see what happens. Well, in other words, that means there's no O2 that's just passing through. All of that O2 gets converted to either the carbon dioxide or the water vapor or the CO, but there's no O2. Is that possible? Well, we can plug in these equations here. So I get B equal 1.7 minus 2F and F is zero. So this is just 1.7. And then E is one minus B is one minus 1.7 equal negative 0.7. And when you get a negative molar coefficient, you say, nah, that's impossible. You can't have that. You can't have a negative molar coefficient. So obviously, this is not possible. And then you can try other cases. Let me do a, one, a case for F equal 1. Well, when I go through the math, I find that this time B is negative. So this also is impossible. So in the first case, when F was zero, we had that B was okay, but E was negative. Here we have the opposite. B is negative and F, that should be an E, not an F. It's okay. So we see that not every F works here, but you can find some sweet spots where you can get an F that works. So for example, let's try F equals 0 0.5. When I say try, let's suppose in an actual experiment, you have a device that measures how much oxygen is in your combustion product. So you actually can measure this F up here and then you can calculate what everything else is after that. Let's just try F equals 0 0.5 and see if that works. 
So yay, this one works. We get positive values for both B and E. So this is my final equation. If I go back to the original equation here and fill in all the variables A, B, C, D, E, and F, I get this final chemical equation. So we see that all this stuff is pretty harmless. The CO2 is harmless to our lungs. It's a greenhouse gas, of course, a water vapor. Nitrogen doesn't do anything. Oxygen is fine. The only bad thing here is the CO, carbon monoxide. So that's our air pollutant. Now you should be able to do this for any fuel. Every fuel has a different chemical equation. So I could give you a fuel and the stoichiometric coefficient, and I'd have to give you F or B or E, and you'd be able to find everything else. You should be able to do this kind of molar balance for any combustion. And you might also have, like I said, not just these products on the right, but some NOx, some NO2, some NO, etc., and some other nasty things that you should be able to figure out all these coefficients for combustion. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.